Hey friends, it's Mrs. Walker. Today we're going to talk about decomposing and composing polygons with tetrominoes. So our learning goal for today says I can reason about composing and decomposing polygons using tetrominoes. I'm sure you're probably thinking, what are those? But don't worry, we're going to talk about it. So the materials that you'll need for this lesson are some crayons. You'll need the tetrominoes template. Those are in your math book or in the module. If you do not have these, that is okay. You can make your own. Um, these, you, they have to be in these shapes that you see in the problem set. They need to all be the same size. So you can make them look just like these by drawing them out on paper. But if you have these templates, it will be much easier because you can just cut them out, okay? Or, um, If you have to, you can follow along with the lesson. Okay, you'll also need your problem set because we're gonna work through that together with this lesson as well. All right, friends. So each of these shapes is called a tetronimo. Okay, so here we have them. Look how fun they look, right? So the area of each tetronimo is measured in square units. What is the area of each one in square units? units. So pause the video, take a look at each one, and what do you notice is the area? All right, friends, pause if you need more time. They're all four square units, all of them, right? They just look different, but they each have four square units. All right, so notice that each square unit shares a whole side with another square. So look here, like these two share these sides, over here, these two share these two sides. But they do that throughout all of those tetronimos. Okay, so I want you to say the name of these shapes. Tetromino. Okay, it's a little tricky, but think of like domino, but with a tetromino. <laughs> All right, so take a few minutes and make some shapes with the tetronimos. Now, you can use more than one shape as you're going through, or more than one of each one of the tetronimos um, to be able to do that. So pause the video. Take just like one or two minutes and just make some shapes by pushing them together. Okay? Okay, remember, you can use more than one. All right, friends, so let's talk about it. What shapes did you make? So here's some that you could have made, right? And then check this one out. Look at that, that's a cool one, right? So how did I use these shapes to make my new rectangle? So how did I go from these three shapes to this? I want you to pause the video and I want you to analyze how did I do that? Because they don't look the same from the left side to the right side. So what did I have to do to be able to make those shapes fit together? I didn't cut them apart. So what did I have to do? Think about that for a minute and then click play when you're ready to go over it together. All right, friends. So I had to rotate and flip the shapes to make them fit together. Okay, so you're allowed to do that. They don't have to stick the same way that you first cut them out. Flip them, move them around. All right, so let's look at the problem set. Here we go. You're gonna use the tetronimos to create at least two different rectangles. Then color the grid below to show how you created your rectangles. You may use the same tetronimo more than once. You can flip and rotate too, just like I did. Okay, so two different rectangles. Pause the video, come up with two different rectangles, color them in, Remember, and use the different colors so you'll be able to see the different um, tetronimos that you started with to make the rectangle. And then click play when you're ready to go over it together. All right, friends. So your rectangles could look like this. Do they have to look like that? No. So just keep that in mind that your rectangles might look different than these, and that's okay. How do you know your shapes and these shapes are rectangles? Think about what it means to be a rectangle. How do we know that the ones that you drew and the ones that I drew are rectangles? 
right? So remember the, side, the opposite sides are equal. All four corners are right angles and they have two sets of parallel lines. That's what you need to be a rectangle. That's the attributes you need. All right, so what is the smallest rectangle you can make with tetronomos and how do you know? So pause the video, look at your shapes, look at your tetronomos and see what's the smallest rectangle you could make. All right, friends, here's what I came up with. Just these two guys, right? Because a one by four unit rectangle, or we could make a two by two unit rectangle with the square piece, because the square is a rectangle too, and its area is four square units, just like these rectangles. All right, so you're gonna use your tetronomos to make the smallest rectangle you can without using the square or the long straight tetronimo. So you can't use those two. You gotta use any of the other shapes to come up with the smallest rectangle. Okay, so pause the video, give it a try. All right, friends. So how did you make your rectangle? This is what I came up with. All right, so remember, Again, keep in mind your rectangle might look different than this, okay? All right, let's look at problem two on the problem set. So here we have it. How is problem two different than problem one? So I want you to pause the video, look a little closely at problem two. What is different about this one than problem one? And then click play when you're ready to go over it together. All right, friends, pause if you need more time. All right, problem two tells us the area of the square has to be 36 units. Okay, the first problem didn't tell us we were able to choose. So this one's a little different in that sense. How many tetronomos will you use to solve problem two and how do you know? So pause the video, think about that for a second. How many will you use to solve problem two? Remember, the area has to be 36 square units. All right, so it has to be big enough to fill 36 square units. So we could use nine tetronomos because each tetronomo has an area of four square units. And nine times four equals 36. Or 36, so we know, is the area divided by four because each shape has four equals nine. So you would need nine. So what will be the side lengths of your square and how do you know? So pause the video, think about that. What will be the side lengths of your square and how do you know? All right, what do you think, friends? How about six units? Because the side lengths of the square are equal and we know that six times six equals 36. All right, so how can the grid help you make a square with an area of 36 square units? So pause the video, think about how can that grid help you if we're looking for um, a square with an area of 36 square units? All right, friends, what do you think? So some of the things like I kind of heard a little bit was I can mark a six by six grid so I know that my square has that area when I build with tetrominoes. Or once I mark the six by six grid, I don't even need the tetrominoes because I know that a square has an area of 36. Hmm. All right, so now I want you to solve problem two. So pause the video, solve all of problem two, A and B, and then click play when you're ready to go over it together. All right, friends, here's what I came up with. So here are my two rectangles, okay? My equation to show the area of the square above as the sum, right? So sum is we're looking for a repeated addition sentence would be four plus 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 four equals 36. You should have nine fours right there, right? Because nine times four is 36, okay? Write an equation to show the area of a square above as the product of its side lengths. So product tells us that we are multiplying. So six times six equals 36. 
Okay, so good job with that one, friends. All right, nice. Great job composing and decomposing polygons using tetrominoes. All right, so please head back on over to the module to see what you need to complete for your independent practice. As always, if you have any questions, please let me know. I'll be more than happy to help. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Bye, friends.